The House is still prosecuting the case for impeachment. Nancy Pelosi got a standing ovation at the Kennedy Center Honors, and the president is tweeting off the charts. Meanwhile, we've got a few stories you might also want to pay attention to. Amazon versus AOC, AOC won. It's time for a reckoning on Afghanistan, and innovation jobs still only go to a few places. I'm Jamal Simmons. Here's why you should care. Tech giants will be setting up shop in New York City, and two progressives are saying, I told you so. Amazon announced on Friday that it's opening an office in Midtown Manhattan, and guess what? The company says it won't be getting any tax breaks this time. This comes weeks after Facebook leased more than 1.5 million square feet of space. Google is making big moves in the Big Apple, too. They're aiming to add thousands of workers in the next few years. This is music to Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's ears. The fiery lawmaker who represents parts of the Bronx and Queens pushed back against Amazon's plan to open up in Long Island City earlier this year because of the tax breaks and subsidies the company would have received. She celebrated the news on Friday, tweeting, quote, won't you look at that? Amazon is coming to New York City anyway without requiring the public to finance shady deals, helipad handouts to Jeff Bezos, and corporate giveaways. She later tweeted she's waiting on her critics to apologize. Bernie Sanders, who's also been critical of Amazon, tweeted his support of AOC's stand against the tech giant, saying, quote, AOC and many others fighting for working people were right. Now, why you should care? Last week, Fair Tax Mark, a British organization that certifies businesses for good conduct, published findings of its research on global tax payments from various tech giants, including Facebook, Google, and Amazon, between 2010 and 2019. Altogether, the companies avoided $100 billion in taxes over nearly 10 years. Paying taxes for most of us isn't an option. If we don't pay, Uncle Sam comes to get us. How can a company as rich as Amazon with a $1 trillion market valuation to be exact, how can Amazon continue to operate without paying up? Ask Wesley Snipes. U.S. officials knowingly misled the American people about the war in Afghanistan. They led the public to believe there was progress being made when evidence suggested the war had become, in fact, unwinnable. That's according to a new report from the Washington Post. After winning a long legal battle with the U.S. government, the Post obtained a trove of documents that include 2,000 pages of never-before-seen notes of interviews with people who had a direct role in the war in Afghanistan, and they spanned the Bush, Obama, and Trump administrations from generals to diplomats to aid workers and Afghanistan officials, according to the report. Here's why you should care. The war in Afghanistan is the longest armed conflict in U.S. history, with almost 800,000 U.S. troops having been deployed to the Middle East country since 2001. According to the Defense Department, 2,300 soldiers died in Afghanistan, with over 20,000 wounded in action. And during last year alone, almost 4,000 Afghan civilians were killed in the war, according to the United Nations. America's been through this before, back in the Vietnam era. The Pentagon withheld vital information from the public. Going to war is the most serious thing a government can do, and the American people deserve the truth to decide whether and when to pull the plug on military action. Some cities rise while the rest of America lags when it comes to the innovation economy. The Brookings Institution released a report that has economic policy analysts reviving concerns about the concentration of opportunity in just a few places in America while the rest of the country struggles to compete. The cities that are attracting these jobs, there are 20 of them, and they include places like San Francisco, Seattle, San Jose, Boston, and San Diego. Now, what do they have in common? They have a high number of people with degrees. They have a research university and amenities that high-income workers enjoy. This isn't the first time researchers have sent up a flare about the concentration of opportunities in America. The trend lines are daunting in several directions. 75% of the investment capital in the United States is spent in three states, just three, California, New York, and Massachusetts. One study put 87% of investment capital going into the hands of white and Asian male teams. Black women are able to raise only $36,000 in capital, while average company headed by a white guy raises about $1.3 million. Here's how the Brookings Report authors propose fixing the geographic problem. They want to identify 8 to 10 cities with a research university and a critical mass of people with advanced degrees. Then get the government to invest $700 million a year for research and development in each one of those cities. Do that for a decade. 
relax regulatory and tax laws to spark investment and cement gains in those cities. Why you should care. There's a market failure in getting more Americans to participate in the innovation economy, and it's going to bite the country in the butt if we don't fix it. We can't just have a country where a few men at the top who go to just a few schools, live in just a few cities along the coast, and are mostly white, hoard all the benefits, like some goodies mob passing around candies to their friends. We need to refresh the gene pool of innovation with new people in more places, and as this report from Brookings points out, the government will probably have to intervene. Who's talking about that on the presidential campaign trail? Thanks for watching Hill TV on YouTube. Be sure to click subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we post new videos and head to thehill.com for all the latest political news.